Ancient Anunnaki Aliens and the Mysterious Planet Nibiru, How the Earth and We Were Created Is a group of gods from Sumeria, Akkad, Babylon, and Assyria. American novelist Zechariah Sidon was born in Azerbaijan. He advocated a theory that ancient astronauts were part of the human ancestry. According to Sechen, the Anunnaki, an alien race from Nibiru, were the ones who established the Sumerian society. He was of the opinion that the fictional planet Nibiru in the solar system was in a long, circular orbit. His beliefs were also reflected in Sumerian mythology. Over 25 languages have been used to translate Sechen's works, and millions of copies have been sold worldwide. Researchers and academicians reject Sechen's convictions, excusing them as pseudo-history and pseudoscience. Sechen's work has been chastised for its unfortunate technique, mistranslations of old compositions, and bogus celestial and logical cases. Similar to earlier authors like Emanuel Velikovsky and Eric von Deneken, Sechen proposed theories in which alien events allegedly played a significant role in early human history. Sechen's interpretation of Mesopotamian imagery and symbolism, which he presented in his 1976 book The Twelfth Planet and subsequent works, asserts that there is a mysterious planet beyond Neptune that makes an extended, elliptical orbit of the inner solar system once every 3,600 years. This planet, Nibiru, is. Sechen claims that Nibiru collided catastrophically with Tiamat, a goddess in the Babylonian creation myth known as the Enuma Eli, which he believes was once situated between Mars and Jupiter. In the original legends, Nibiru's name was changed to Marduk by a Babylonian ruler of the same name in an effort to co-opt the creation for himself, causing some confusion among readers. The planet Earth, the asteroid belt, and comets were formed as a result of the collision. Sechen claims that one half of Tiamat became the asteroid belt after it was struck by one of Nibiru's moons and then Nibiru struck the broken pieces again on a subsequent pass. One of Nibiru's moons forced the second half into a new orbit, creating Earth today. Nibiru, according to Sechen, was home to a technologically advanced extraterrestrial race known as the Anunnaki in Sumerian myth, who Sechen claims are known in Genesis as the Nethuum. The Sumerians' god-given conception of the solar system counted all eight planets, plus Pluto, the Sun, and the Moon. They began to develop 450,000 years before Nibiru entered our solar system and landed on Earth. They were looking for minerals, particularly gold, which they had found in Africa. Sechen claims that these gods were part of the Nibiru to Earth colonization mission. Enki suggested that the Anunnaki, who had rebelled against their working conditions, should be freed from their primitive workers, Homo sapiens, by crossing their genetics with those of Homo erectus. By crossing the genetics of Homo erectus with those of extraterrestrials, they can also be replaced in gold mines. Ancient writings, according to Sechen, assert that these gods were in charge of establishing human civilization in Sumer, Mesopotamia, and that human royalty was established to act as a link between humans and the Anunnaki, forming the idea of the divine right of kings. Sechen argues that nuclear weapons used in a conflict between alien groups are the cause of the bad wind mentioned in the Lament for Yor, which destroyed Yor around 2000 BC. Sechen asserts that the year 2024 BC actually exists. Sechen says that his findings are in line with a lot of the Bible and that the Bible is based on Sumerian literature. Particularly, Sechen's work has been criticized in three areas, astronomical and scientific observations, myth literalism, and ancient text translations and interpretations. There are two differences, translation and interpretation. When Sechen wrote his works, only professionals could access Sumerian. The Sumerian Lexicon 2006, on the other hand, has made it more accessible to non-experts. Ancient language expert Michael S. Heiser challenges interested parties to use this book to verify the accuracy of Sechen's translations, claiming to have discovered several flaws. Author of Invented Knowledge, Professor Ronald H. Fritz Sechen's assignment of meanings to ancient words is tendentious and frequently strained. According to false history, fake science, and pseudo-religions, cites Sechen's claim that the Sumerian signing era means pure ones of the blazing rockets. Fritza describes Sechen's methods as he frequently cites out of context or truncates his statements in a way that distorts facts in order to establish his contentions when opponents investigated Sechen's sources. Anything is presented selectively, and evidence that does not support the claim is omitted. The seal VA243 and Sechen's own readings of Sumerian and pre-Nubian writings serve as the foundation for his arguments. Sechen asserted that only five ancient civilizations were aware of a twelfth. Numerous Sumerian astrological seals and calendars have been found. Each seal contains five planets. In seal VA243, 12 locations are identified by Sechen as planets. Since the translation reads your servant, 
Sealed VA 243 is interpreted as a message from a servant to a lord. Michael S. Heiser, a semiologist, says that seal VA 234's so-called sun is not the sun sign in Sumeria, and the dots are stars. The numerous Sumerian sun symbols that have been found have very little in common with the VA 243 seal. In a 1979 review of the 12th planet, Roger W. Westcott, professor of anthropology and linguistics at Drew University in Madison, New Jersey, criticized Sechen's amateurism regarding the predominance of the Sumerian language, similar to his anthropology, biology, and astronomy, Sechen's linguistics appears to be inadequate. On page 370, for instance, he asserts that all the ancient languages, including early Chinese, derived from one primal source, Sumerian. Interestingly, Sumerian serves as the virtual model for what linguistic taxonomists refer to as a language isolate. A language that does not belong to any well-known group of languages or has obvious cognition with another language is referred to as this. It is difficult to refute Sechen's assertion, even if he was referring to written language, European signators like the Azilian or Tartarian, as well as a variety of script-like notational systems that existed between the Nile and Indus rivers, preceded Sumerian ideologies. The Sumerian literature, written in Sumerian during the Middle Bronze Age, is referred to as Sumerian literature. Assyrian or Babylonian copies are the primary means by which Sumerian literature is preserved. The first written language was invented by Sumerians. To create Sumerian cuneiform, they adapted earlier proto-writing systems from the 1930s. The first written texts appeared around 27 BC. In the Akkadian or Babylonian empires, Sumerian continued to be used in official and literary contexts despite the population's loss of spoken language. Students recopied Sumerian books, which had a significant impact on later Babylonian literature and were widely read. Archaeology assisted in the discovery of Sumerian literature, which was not directly handed down to us. Nonetheless, Sumerian writing was not straightforwardly passed to us by the Akkadians or Babylonians. They spread it across the Middle East and had an impact on much later works of literature, including the Bible. Sechen was born on January 11, 1920, in Baku, Azerbaijan SSR. On October 9, 2010, he passed away at the age of 90. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe.